The Tigers overwhelmed by the tide. We got to break it down on the Hannycast. The Hannycast, a weekly LSU football film study with Charles Hannigriff and former LSU tight end Richard Dixon. Now to break down the Tiger tape, here's Charles and Richard. Well, welcome into this week's version of the Hannycast. I'm Charles Hannigriff along with former Tiger Richard Dixon. And LSU uh, just completely dominated in a 42-13 loss to Alabama. This one stings for a lot of reasons. Uh, this was a de facto playoff elimination game, Rich. Uh, a third loss is going to make it really hard. Uh, probably takes that off the table. Everything was sort of set up. LSU had uh, the game in Tiger Stadium. The crowd was electric. The weather held up enough to, that nobody left before the game started. And um, right out of the shoot, uh, Alabama took control of this game and never really let up. And it seemed like LSU was really unprepared for this game. Yeah, I mean, it was frustrating from the standpoint that, you know, we talked all week long with, or t- for two weeks basically that stopped the quarterback run game, and it comes out there with something that we don't get done. Uh, the offense looked very similar to the second half of the A&M game. Nussmeyer getting fooled in some coverages, really struggling to push the ball down the field. And it was just an all-out, you know, rough game to watch. The run game by the quarterback was so frustrating because this is the double whammy, right? Last year, Jalen Milrow essentially won this game for Alabama. He had 155 yards on 20 carries and four touchdowns. This year, uh, he comes in and has more yard, 30 more yards on eight fewer carries and essentially dominates the game again. And this is two weeks after and the, the next game after. Uh, you know, uh, Marcel Reed did the same thing for Texas A&M. So why they were not more prepared for this? Or maybe they... Maybe the game plan was fine. The execution wasn't. We're going to look at this film no. here uh, and, and see. They just had no answer for him. Yeah, to me, it's a little bit of both. You're going to see plays similar to, you know, Marcel Reed's plays where, you know, the defense was called correctly. Guys didn't get in the right run fits and right gaps. And then, you know, in this game, there's one play on the long one where we have a bad blitz call into it. It's, it's unfortunate timing. But there's other ones where guys are getting – we're getting two and three guys in the same gap and not playing with gap integrity. Marcel Reed is a talented runner. Jalen Milrow is an exceptional runner. But they're not every week dominating another team, okay? Just last year, the, the game he had against LSU, we're talking about Milrow, was by far the biggest one, by like yeah. 70 yards the biggest game that he had. This year, he's only run for 100 yards in one other game. Uh, Marcel Reed, uh, the week after they played LSU, they went to South Carolina. South Carolina held him to 2.9 yards a carry. The three three touchdowns he scored against LSU match his career high in one game. So I think that's the frustrating thing. If this – Tim Tebow ran on everybody, okay? You you, you played against Tebow. Uh, Cam Newton ran on everybody. These guys don't run on everybody. They just run on LSU. That's yeah. the aggravating part. Oh, trust me, it, it is as frustrating as it possibly can be, um, especially when you go back and look at the other games. Like, you know, we can talk about Vanderbilt having a great year this year. We're talking about being down on talent. I would take our talent over Vanderbilt's defense talent nine times out of ten. It's just the way that the guys fit and the way the guys understand the scheme of the defense. All right, let's take our uh, let's take the medicine early here. This is the first play we're going to look at is the 39-yard run by Jalen Milrow to uh, open the scoring in this game. This is from the LSU 39-yard line. Yeah, you can go ahead and hit play, but um, you know, it's it's hard to see from this angle. You're going to end up with Swinson. I think makes a mistake. You get two guys playing the outside gap with a corner with no protection. You get um, Whit Weeks over pursuing, getting in the wrong gap, and it's just like when you have two or three mistakes it gashes the play and you're sitting there wondering what happened. All right, let's take a look here at the formation. So you're going to see that, you know, Swinson's playing a head up seven right here, but he also has a a free cornerback. Cornerback's going to have contain. Swinson's got to keep his inside gap. He gambles, plays outside. And then, so you're going to have a seal here. Both D tackles get doubled. Um, Suggs tries to hold it. He gets beat a little bit. Um, 93, bro, he gets beat up pretty good. But you're going to get a two gap right here where, you know, Witt is trying to cover up for somebody, and it's really because Swinson ends up bouncing outside. Let's take a look from the end zone view. The hit pause right here. Right here, Swinson is the inside guy. He's got to stay inside because you got 14 out here. He's got the edge. And if you were to stay right here, you, you look, Weeks right here, this is his gap. Every gap would be covered. But when he decides to bounce outside, it creates a seam right here 
which Whit Weeks starts gambling. Do I play the inside or do I play the outside gap? He's got his head inside where he's supposed to be. But when he sees um, Milro bouncing out this way, he sticks his head back this way, gets washed, and it creates a big gap on the backside. Can we talk about the safety where, uh, where yeah, Gilbert we'll is? That again. And I think right here, hit pause. I think you saw how his head was inside where he's supposed to be in this gap right here. I think that's where he was supposed to be. The safety's supposed to be fitting right here. And if everybody fits those gaps, like you said, Swenson's supposed to be on the inside right here with uh, 14 on Alexander, the edge. Alexander, yeah. They, they would have this thing sewed up. But when four jumps outside, okay, so now you got two guys on the outer half right here. Weeks peaked inside, saw him bailing out this way. So now you're going to have two guys in this gap right here, which leaves nobody on the backside. Is Swenson not trying to – I see him turn his shoulders here. Is he not trying to funnel Milrow back to the inside? He's trying to squeeze, but at that point, then what is 14 doing? you got to do your job. If he's trying to squeeze that, then 14 needs to fit right here, and then you're going to have three guys in the same gap regardless. All right, let's run it forward a little bit here. All right. Now you got now, 40, now Gilbert two, is, is committed well, you know. Four, 14, you got four guys carrying one gap and nobody on the backside. And look, you know, bro got washed right there. He's a young guy. He's got to learn, um, get more physical. But he just straight up gets beat right there, washed. 31 allows the wash on the backside, and you have nobody containing the backside gap. Which, you know, look, Weeks has been our best defensive player. My assumption just by watching the snaps, that was his role to stay on that backside. You see any more from the wide side here? You'll see a bigger picture if you let it go just a little bit. A press pause at the mesh point. So right there, this is a run design to the right. At four, right here looks pretty good, you know. But this is right when he's trying to fight back outside. You got fourteen filling in right here. Miro wants to bring the ball here, but when he jumps outside, fourteen stays outside. Look, Whitweek's got to fit this gap right here, and I, and I get what he's saying. He's got his head in there. He's looking. He's looking at Milro. He knows Milro's about to bounce it. But when he bounces it, one of these guys has to stay integrity to the inside. You get 40 and 2 both filling outside, and you get 4 and 14 both filling outside, and there's nothing on the backside of the field. I don't think he ever got touched. No, he, he, he didn't get touched. And I put LSU in a 7 0 hole. They would, never, uh, they would never lead in this game. We're brought to you by Marucci Sports, founded and operated by current and former big leader leaguers. Hey, the Hitters House, 5801 Segan Lane, undergoing some changes right now, some real good improvements coming to the Hitters House. You can be a member, 24-7 access to the members-only cages, bullpen cage reservation opportunities, 15% retail store discount. Like I said, some great things coming to the retail store. Uh, all the Marucci aluminum composite bats are available there. New Hitters House at 1801 Airline Drive in Metairie. I tell you what, they got some great expansions coming up with the Hitters Houses and the retail opportunities with them. For more information, uh, go to maruchisports.com. Okay, um, let's. You found a positive play, bless your heart. Uh, <laughs> this was second and 10 from midfield. Uh, this is LSU's first possession, and Caden Durham is going to get loose. Yeah, you're going to see that we're going to – I'm not sure what the read is on here, but you're going to see you know, Nussmeyer sees something that they've been coached up on. They motion back to the, the pistol formation, which we've talked a lot about, especially last week. It evens the field. When we're in pistol, it, it's really hard to tell which side of the ball we're running to. But when we get over there, they're going to make an adjustment. Once they go to pistol, you're going to see the safety is going to carry the running back here. Once they go to pistol, he sp goes on the backside – and it opens up the gap up the middle of the field. Let's watch it. Trips to the near side. So watch. We go to pistol, the safety, Ocean Springs boy, Bray Hubbard goes over to the left side. And we really get a good block by only, I would say, you know, 50 and 86, Taylor and Emory Jones. They did a really good job passing it off, um, sealing the guy on the backside. I think this run was probably more, could have gone inside and you could have had a bigger play. You want to see... 79, he has – this is something he struggled with. He gets beat a lot across his face. They got to work up right here. Right now, you got Emory Jones in 86. They're two for two right here. He's getting that motion on the inside. They pass it off well when he passes over. But we get beat on the inside. 65 never gets the cutoff. 79 really doesn't get up. It could have hit earlier if they make their blocks. 
but because of what they do right here and the way they carry the outside, and you'll really see from the wide view, the wide receivers block it pretty good. We've talked about running out of the pistol. So let's once once you get and he moves Durham back behind him. So watch, you're gonna get the safety run back over here, and this is really important in two plays. Let me show you. Right now, you got this is the field's open. Right now, you're gonna have two for two. These two got to get these two and a gap to hit up here. These handle it pretty well. 79 gets beat, doesn't get up the top. And Frazier really, you know, I don't know if it's an MA on his part. He's still working to the right. But once he realizes this guy plays soft and they both get up on him, Frazier has to hit eight, uh, zero faster. 79's got to cut him off. And there could have been a bigger play up the middle. Hit pause. Uh, go back just a half second. I'm going to tell you to hit pause and there. Right here, when he flies out, Frazier has to get back because you see 79's getting beat across the face. You know, that kind of stretches the play. But if he works from here to here. Okay, let me ask a, a dumb question. How's Frazier supposed to know that Chester's getting beat that bad with his back to the play? It's not supposed to be getting back. It's understanding responsibility. That once he flies out, it's 50 and 86 are responsible for those guys. When you see him crossing his face right here, work back. You, you always understand once you can't get there, there's no way he's going to cut him off. He's already out leveraged. So he's got to work back, chip through here to 80. Because you know, these two guys end up on the same spot. They don't really get anything done. And then 70 eventually works back, and it helps out on the seal. But I think this play really could have hit up this gap, which would have probably been a, a home run if they'd, uh, you know, he'd have been further away from the DB. It just pushes the ball further out. And, you know, like, you know one's just a great athlete. You, you think Durham is our guy that can break away with speed, but one made a great play. Uh, he he did, and I, and I wonder if Durham is still I oh, started quite questioning 100%. at that point. Yeah. He didn't seem 100% because that's one of the times when he gets an open field like that, you, you assume him to break it. But if you watch right here, I mean, the receivers block. This, this run play right here is on the receivers. They block really well on the edge. Everybody gets covered up. 29 finds a seam. It was well blocked on the outside. Might have been the happiest I was all night, Rich. Oh, I thought we were going to answer really quick. <laughs> felt, felt pretty good uh, at that point. <laughs> all right, Milro didn't throw a lot of passes uh, in this game, but uh, this was one down in the red zone. They're at the LSU. Uh, they are at the seven-yard line, and this was going to take them down just right, in, uh, right around the one. This is a third and five. Look, you know, at this point, the reason I put this in here is you know, this is – to stop them from scoring on consecutive drives. Make them kick a field goal, keep it close. This is one, in the situation where we're in a third and five. You can make a play right here and force the field goal. All right, let's take a look. Set the formation. What's LSU doing here? They're going to drop zone right now. You got, you know, he's going to play the flat defender. He's playing deep. He's playing in the middle. Whit Weeks gets in a bad situation. You get 18 is going to come outside to block the cutoff, which puts Whit Weeks man on man with the running back, and like, the running back wins. Running backs won a lot of them. Just, a, just a little circle route. What, just a, what you call it? Just a, it's an angle route. It, yeah, he's going to start outside and come back in. I'm really confused by what Swenson's doing right here. You're going to have an off-ball tight end. He's playing off the ball. He, I really don't understand what he's doing other than maybe trying to slow him up. But he, he reaches out with the tight end and then decides to come off. I don't know if that point that is, is he supposed to be the flat defender because he, he starts on coverage with the tight end and it made Weeks' job easier to play a little bit further inside. What Kelly talked about today with, the, with, with these backs was when they were going, venturing towards the outside, whether they were going to kick the, the defender out or they were going to continue up the field with a route. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that really coming into play here. My guess is that you're going to have a deep zone, flat zone. Once this guy releases – he takes off because he plays the tight end at first. He's going to take him on the outside to make sure he's not getting reached for a stretch play. But then he decides to blitz. And it puts 40 in a really tough spot because when you're in an option route with the running back, you know, his goal is to prevent from inside breaker. But once Swenson has gone, he's got to try to play both sides. He's an outbreaker, inbreaker, and he gets over, um, over, foot, over his feet. Which all in all, it wasn't greatly covered on the backside. You're going to see, rewind it real back and watch number five. He could have probably hit the touchdown right here where 
burns his eyes all the way inside, and he's running like a little scene post. Dealer's choice, uh, yeah. if you will. All right, that made it uh, a 14-3 to ball game. We're brought to you by Dependable Storage, now with eight locations in Louisiana and one in Gulfport, Mississippi. Check out the new facilities in Slidell and Youngsville. They'll match any competitor's pricing, convenient online rentals and payments with free use of their moving truck for new rental move-ins. Clean, secure, and conveniently located. Check out the website at dependablestorage.com for locations, pricing, and rentals. Like Skip always says, Dependable Storage wants your stuff. Okay, we're going to move forward here to another run by Caden Durham. This one doesn't bust for nearly as much, and you say Alabama made an adjustment yeah, here. Yeah, it's, it's the exact same run play. We just don't motion to it. We get straight to it out of the huddle. But you're going to see where 18, earlier when we had him on the, in the, um, on the right side, he motioned over to the left. He stays in the box the whole time right here. There's going to be another check play. They make the check. You're going to see the, the linebacker point over to the right, which kind of concerns me that they understand what we're trying to do right here. He starts pointing to where the play is going. They keep the safety in the box. And the same thing happens. We get a good block, but instead of this busting for 45 like the one before, it's a seven-yard run. Before we let the play run, and, and this is a, a run play, not a pass play, but Kalen DeBoer in his post game did allude to the fact that we saw enough on film that there were times where we – had a pretty good idea where they were going. I'm paraphrasing here, yeah, but I mean, that's, pretty good idea where they were going. You've heard that through multiple outlets at this point that you know they're starting to get an understanding of what Joe Sloan's wanting to do, and he's becoming a little bit more predictable. Let's take a, a look here. It's a positive play, but nothing near like what they had the first time. So they don't motion into the pistol this they don't time. Motion, they, just, they line up in it. They start to check it out. Look, everybody's pointing left. They're bringing the safety down into the box instead of bringing them over here. And when it hits up the gap, the safety comes in to make the play and stop where he wasn't previous because he had motioned over to the left side of the ball. All right, when we go to the end zone view, I'm going to have a, a, a question for you. Okay, if Durham had started out uh, on the right side and then motioned back into this, do you think Alabama would have played it the way they did the first time or they would still be in this? They had already made the adjustment is what I'm asking you. Yeah, you know, I, I really don't think so because this is where, you know, when he was on the right side, this is where he was. I think it's an adjustment made because we get a look over here. Nussmeyer goes and makes a check. I don't think this was a call originally. But once they make the check, all they do is bring the safety down to the box. I'm looking at my little play sheet here. Durham made the 45-yard run with 10.20 to go in the first quarter. This play is run with a minute 50 to go in the first quarter. Alabama made an adjustment from the 10-minute mark to the one-minute mark. LSU didn't make an adjustment the whole game. This is going to drive people crazy, you know? Yeah. Well, I, oh. I didn't mean for you to point it out that blatantly, but yeah. Well, <laughs> look, man, I, See, I don't enjoy this, seeing, though. <laughs> these guys are reading it. All the Alabama, Alabama linebackers are pointing. Get over, get over, they, get over. They, they know, down, they know where it's going. They're very well coached. They understand. Look, this could have been a bigger play. We don't get the reach blocks. Caden Durham makes a cut, but they, they understood what was about to happen. They made the adjustment, and they bring guys down. And they hold it to a, a seven-yard gain is what LSU makes on this play. You go from 45 to, to – so Run back to the tight view real quick. Right. So right here, this is Paul Mabinga. He, he struggles to get right here. He doesn't get the cutoff. He gets beat. And this is another scenario where, you know, Cushenberry has really struggled to get to the next level. He, he has to get up here on zero. He tries to work up there. They both get beat over the top. And Durham's still able to get seven yards out of it. Cushionberry probably would have gotten oh, not there. Cushenberry. It's Chester. Chester. Cushionberry would have gotten there. probably would have yeah. gotten there. I. Sorry, guys. But to me, that is the exact same play we ran on the forty-five yard play. We get a different look. Alabama adjusts. They bring the safety down into the box, and they prevent it from being another big play. And you don't think that the lack of motion had anything to do with it? No, I think that you know once they got here. My thing is everybody on the defense is pointing. Yeah, they, and the same something. three, same three receivers, same. Yeah, they same block guys on the outside, here. but the safety stays in the box. Okay, now let me let me take up for LSU here for a second because one of the big, uh, one of the big criticisms was that Caden Durham wasn't in the game enough and that they didn't run him enough. All right, so if Alabama's already made an adjustment here, okay, but if Alabama's already made an adjustment here in the first quarter. Was there less room for him to run on some of these things that they were showing? There could be, but, I mean, I'm still taking a seven-yard run. I mean, they made the adjustment, yeah. they filled the box, and we were still able to fit it for seven yards. I mean, the first half of football, I think in the first quarter, maybe early in the second quarter, we had 56 yards or 55 yards. 
double what we had against A and M, and then it just kind of we went away from it. And I get that they busted out in the second half, get a bigger lead, but we completely abandoned the run game. We're brought to you by Lake Urgent Care. 25 years of experience dedicated to providing quality care close to home. They treat minor illnesses and injuries for ages three months and up at 17 convenient locations, including Baton Rouge, Hammond, Livingston, and Ascension Parish, plus occupational health and weight loss solutions. As a seamless extension of Our Lady of the Lake, patients can access care from anywhere with the My Client Patient Portal. Our urgent care centers are open seven days a week. Simply walk in, check in online, or schedule a virtual care visit at lakeurgentcare.com. Okay, this uh, ends up being uh, a, a an incomplete pass, but they didn't throw a whole lot of balls over the top. Maybe the weather had something to do with that, but they had they had some opportunities, and this is one that they missed. This might be the one that you know that kind of scared them away from it because he is their most sure-handed receiver. He gets the look he wants. We're in cover one man. Everybody's running man. I don't know what Sage Oof. is doing right there. But, look, 14 just gets beat. I mean, he, he can't run with Williams. Not a lot of people can. But you've got to have help over the top. And I'm let me not back sure it up. what Sage is doing. All right. Let, let, let's t- let you, you said it's cover one. And you can't really see it on this thing. But it's raining at this point. I remember, yeah, the, I, really I remember well. this play. So, let's, so you're going to have man on man with 14 on Williams. you got um, two covering the, in, the slot Gilbert, receiver. Yeah. You're going to have the safety over the top free. But for some reason, he helps out Gilbert instead of where, in my opinion, all eyes should be on Williams. Watch it from uh, from this angle one more time. It, it, if, if this ball is well thrown or if it's not raining, this is a touchdown. It's as good as it can be thrown. He gets both hands on it. It's a little out front. He makes his catch nine out of ten times. That's – but if you watch the front, look, their offense line did a great job. We didn't get pressure here. They they push him back. They throw it deep. He get you can't throw it much better. I mean, he gets it in his hands. Thank yeah. God it was pouring down. This was the hardest it rained in the whole game. Yeah. Okay. Let's but take a look here. if I'm watching this, they, they're trying to. Penn ends up coming on this play. Uh, in, in I a, think it's more of a green dog. I think he, he either has the back or tight end, which one ever one stays stayed in. in. Okay. He comes in off the blitz. But where I'm really concerned is Sage. We're playing heavy over the right side. I'm not sure if he's trying to help anyone out over there, but you're getting Josh or Josh Williams, uh, Ryan Williams, free. I mean, that's yeah. their biggest threat. I want Sage playing more in the middle right here because you're already showing what you're doing. Williams is to the far outside. So hit pause right here. Okay. William or Sage's eyes have already gone to the crosser. He's looking at helping over to safety instead of getting depth right here to help the cornerback. Oof. You know, like 14's been our best cornerback. Williams is probably the best receiver in the SEC. You can't – got to help out on that. Yeah, he's he, he's a special talent. We talked about whether they would, would go with him or just wherever he ended up, that's who took him. He only ended up with two catches in the game. Yeah, and but I, with what Milrow did, it didn't matter. I will say, you know, we talked about that. 14 swapped sides of the field in this game. He played on the right side and left side. All right, this is um, one of the plays that uh, LSU did a good job on. This is the fourth and one where LSU stops it for no gain and takes a football. This is from the LSU 40-yard line. Swinson makes this play. I mean, this is his best play of the game. Um, I want to say that you know, we actually – I'm surprised this didn't get the first down, but the way that Swinson blows up the tight end, he runs him straight into the running back, left him really no option. We're going to get our, our tackle. I think it's Bro here. He gets beat pretty bad. I'm not sure what he's doing, looping inside. But uh, you got to watch Swinson. The play he makes, he drives the guy into the backfield and really stops the play. Let's watch it here. Really confused the wow. way where Bro, he's like overstepping two gaps because he gets so over that from this glance right here, you're going to think he's going to hit it right here for a first down. But watch what Swinson does. He drives his tight end into the running back's lap. Sure did. We go back because if like that Swenson made the play without what he does to this tight end, but the gap you get right here because I, I, I get where you're gonna loop in a little bit, but ninety three comes all the way to where him and Geo Pias run into each other. He ends up falling down and it creates a big gap over on the left side. Thankfully, Swenson made the play. All right, and you'll see it good from here. I mean, 
he drives this tight end into the mesh point. He forced the ball out of where they were trying to go. Unfortunately, right after LSU got the ball back, they missed a blitz pickup. We don't have that play, but um, that was the one when Nussmeyer fumbles it back, and immediately you, you turn the momentum right back around. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, to get that fourth and down stop, get the momentum going, we're still within reach of the game. And then the very first play, Nussmeyer tries to roll out. We've, we've asked him to run a little bit. This is maybe, <laughs> he's not the most fleet foot on this one, and they make a good play stripping the ball. All right, this next play, we're into the second half now. This was one of the backbreakers, uh, or maybe the backbreaker. Um, LSU was down 21-6. to six. They had driven down to the four-yard line, and Nussmeyer's intercepted right at the goal line. They score here, make it 21-13. The crowd's going to be back into it. You still got – you're not even halfway through the third quarter, and it's ball game. You've been completely dominated to this point. But if it's 21-13 – Crowd's going to get back in it. You're going to get going. You're going to get a little bit of momentum. But Lawson makes the interception here. It's the second opportunity we had to get back in the game because once we got the fourth down stop, you yeah. know, we're, we're on the plus side of the field or right there at the middle the field. We couldn't make a play, get a few more points. Then we get this opportunity, and it just, you know, it drains the momentum. All right, let's set the formation here. What they're, they're going to look at where, what Nussmeyer sees is that everybody's covered man. He's going to read man. Really what you have is that the linebackers are checking for inside crossers. You're going to get the guy carry with, I think it's 14 for just a second. But really, his only responsibility is to slow him up across the inside, and the safety's going to take him man. Once he slows him up and engages uh, 14, he looks to go to the outside breaking slant. And it's just a little too little too late because he comes off 14. He's sitting right there in the lane. Yeah, that is Trey Des. And when he went into the game, which he didn't play very much, but I thought they might be looking for him yeah. when he came into the and game it, here. It's simple. I mean, they're going to run some. Uh, it's like a man with, uh, with zone on the inside. They're going to look to try to uh, check up on any in, in breakers. You got the outside guy right here. They're making, they, they got two guys on uh, Lacey. You got the guy playing the man. He's looking for him on the inside or playing with him on the outside. We get over here, and it's, it's a tough look. You're going to see it looks like he's carrying him, but he's got to realize that the safety's got him man-to-man. -man. All the linebacker's doing is checking him to slow him up on the in breaker. Let's watch the play. He was down for the touchback, so they don't even get pinned in bad field position here. Let's watch it from the end zone. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I wish he would have realized what the coverage was. He'd have come off and hit Williams on, in the flat, which would give him a better chance to score. But you're going to see what he sees, and <clears throat> maybe better from the outside view. I think it's zero. All he does is check Green on the inside breaker, not realizing what that's not realizing the safety he already has a man. Both guys, he thinks both guys are carrying. In the second he goes to throw, zero comes off of it, and he's sitting in the lane and makes a pick. He checks him right here. And the second he engaged 14, Nuss had already made up his mind. I don't know that Daniels is really open either, even if that ball gets by him. No, not uh, – no, he, I think he's, he's open. Um, well, you'll, you'll see it pretty good from over here. And I'm – yeah, because 14 is going to carry – Right okay, there. yeah, he's yeah, he open. Might, yeah, he might have got it in there. Better, but better view there. Run it back real quick, and I see where he makes up his mind. If you watch, Bray Hubbard, number 18, he's got a man. He's going to check the inside and come off. When he engaged in him, Nuss just read full man and sold out on the, the outside slant. But what frustrates me is I feel like coordinators are starting to be able to confuse Nuss because they did it against A&M. They started playing that match man to where guys would carry him for a little bit and fall off. There's another play I really wanted on here. Um, that I just didn't find the exact play is where Anderson on a deep crossing route, same thing that the corner carries the, uh, the, the wide receiver on a post route. And right when he breaks off, he bails out to the, the backside deep zone and he almost picks it. Anderson makes a great job breaking it up. What do you do about that? You get, watch more film. You got to understand what they're doing. You got to understand that they're not always, what they're showing you is not what you're going to get and understand that, you know, they're playing a certain, if a guy's beat too easily, he probably didn't have a man. He's just carrying him shortly. We're brought to you by Bayou Apparel, helping local businesses communicate their message since 2009. It's one of only a few local LSU official licensees. Bayou Apparel offers the highest quality products to showcase your brand, whether you've got an established one or a new one. Bayou Apparel design experts help you create eye-catching designs that fit your company's message. They do logos, event t-shirts, and promotional items 
for your business. Call 225-928-9090 or go to the website at buyyouapparel.com. Uh, this is, well, I call the other play the backbreaker, so I can't really call this one the backbreaker. This just kind of finished, uh, finished it off. This is the 72 yard run, uh, by Milrow that essentially put, put the, uh, the, the, the final, the final dagger in here. Yeah. And this is one where you heard Brian Kelly talking to press conference. You know, one of them was misfits, which we showed you ended up with four guys and two gaps that opened up the backside. This is just a tough break. I mean, we call a blitz into it. Um, Guys get washed on the blitz, and they end up creating a big scene. I really want to watch this from the end zone, so yeah. I, I I don't need to watch it go all the way down the field uh, more than once from this angle. So no. let's well, let's watch let's watch from the back uh, the, the end zone view, and you can show us what uh, what Milrow sees here. So you're going to get 42 is going to run out with the running back carrying a man. To me, the biggest point of it is. Gilbert's got to be faster. He's blitzing, but you're going to end up with 40 getting washed. Swinson, this is a bad play by him because he's got to understand when you get a down blocker on the tackle, he's got to come off his ass screaming to blow up the guy that's trying to do the kick out. He gets up the field, it creates a big seam on the backside. You get Gilbert, just run straight up the back of Sugg or Suggs or Shan, whoever's playing that. It's the Shan, shade. I believe. He doesn't get there. Like, you're going to watch as it goes forward. He's sitting right now at about. 10 yards back, but when the ball snaps, he's five yards. He's got a hit here. Swinson has to be screaming right here. You, you see him, like it's almost like he read pass on the whole deal. He's getting up the field. When you get the down blocker, he's got to be off this tackle's butt, hitting this guy in the middle, which would have stopped this way. Gilbert, he's on the blitz, but where is he going? I don't know, because he's, this guy's pulling. He's got to be screaming right through here, and – even though they're, they're talking about it, it's a bad call into it because, look, it, the re, it's a 74-yard run for a reason. But if everybody played their exact technique, it's, it's a shorter gain. You make it a little bit more tougher for them to get wide open. But when you hit play, watch for Gilbert. He's too slow. You get three guys in the same gap. Swinson gets way up the field and gets knocked on his butt, and there's really nothing you can do. Running back one more time. I think this is the best view from the tight zone. But watch, watch Swinson. He, when the guy, is, the second they snap the ball, right there, there's way too much gap between him and the tackle. When the tackle blocks down, you know it's a block down kick out. I mean, that, you've been taught that since you were – Down, down kick, yeah. yeah. It, it, since you were sixth, seventh grade. But, but by him getting up the field, if he's screaming right there and meets him right there off the tackle's butt, there's nowhere to go this way. You force Milrow up into here, and it probably eventually gets stopped. I'd like to see – I don't know what Gilbert's doing, really. He's supposed to be blitzing, but he runs straight up the nose tackle's butt. Weeks gets washed on his blitz. And all that being said, if Swinson comes down on the down-down kickout, he's got to stop it right there, and it makes the play slower. It doesn't allow him just to gash and go. There's the gash, and there's the go. I can make it go forward, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you want you, Anything else from the wide view here? Uh, the only th other thing I would say. That you can see better. It's just a bad angle on Sage Ryan. Sage Ryan plays up and tries to, you know, I don't know it's, it's something that you've been taught for a long time to know your rush lanes, know, you know, your pursuit drill. Everybody runs a pursuit drill at the end of practice. Everybody knows, you know, which angles to run at. And he really plays up and takes himself out to play. Like right there, he runs forward. You never run forward right there because you got too much field over here. He's got to take this angle to stop it at a 20-yard gain or a 15-yard gain. Instead, he tries to play up and runs himself out the play. I mean, he runs a big U. Sure did. The last time in my life I'll ever watch that play. Last time I'll ever watch I've, this I've game. Seen, I've seen it enough times. Uh, Dana Brown, the law office of O.C. Brown, bring you today's handicast. We've always trusted Dana and his team of attorneys for – multiple uh, things that uh, we've needed uh, for a, from a legal standpoint in our lives. You can trust them to be your law firm for a lifetime, family-owned and operated. Dana's carried on his father O.C.'s legacy for the last 30 years. They truly should be your own first and only call, and the first consultation is always free. Call them at 343-1111 on the web. It's O.C. Brown, O-S-S-I-E, brown.com. 
and right down the street from the law office of O.C. Brown, Town Square Pizza, Baton Rouge's newest pizzeria downtown, the Square Pizza, made from scratch right there in front of you, but in a timely manner so you can get back to your office. If you're working downtown and you've got a limited amount of time for lunch, head on over to Town Square Pizza. Generous portions. You're going to be bringing some back to the office with you uh, for later. Town Square Pizza in downtown Baton Rouge. Okay, this is a, a fourth down and five at uh, Alabama's 21. This is about uh, three minutes, three and a half minutes, a little over three minutes into the fourth quarter. And uh, this pass is complete, but it is short of the first down. And, and the most frustrating thing to me is you've got to score in the red zone. This is our fourth or fifth time getting down inside the red zone, and you look at the scoreboard, we only have six points. All right, we'll watch it first, and then we'll come back and. This is fourth and five, do or die. You've got to keep going. I think you know the big thing you're going to see from the wide view is Lacey's got to be stronger. He gets shoved, gets pushed off his route. I think Nussmeyer had made up his mind where he's going with the ball. And once Nuss, uh, Lacey's pushed out, he's kind of lost. He panics and dumps it off because if you see really from the wide view, if he comes back to the left side of the field, there's better options on a fourth and five play instead of dumping it to the running back. He's got a zone defender sitting right there to make the play. <laughs> Lacey's got a lot of company back there where he well, was. Watch watch Lacey. He's got to be stronger here. There's no way. You, you try to run on inside leverage and dip your shoulder, but he gets shoved to the ground, completely throws off the route. Because Right here, he's going to yeah. run a corner. Yeah. And it's so off time right there. Once he gets shoved, Nussmeyer comes back to look for him. He's not where he's supposed to be. And he just panics, dumps it off. But if I'm him right here, when I see him get shoved, I turn back. I'm throwing the green or uh, Mason Taylor. They're tight throws, but on a fourth and five, when I know they got the zone right here, you get both of them. They're going to get hit the second they catch the ball, but they're at a better distance than throwing it off to a running back. He's got a linebacker sitting in zone coverage right behind them. Okay. That's where we will uh, we, we will call it a night. Um, Rich, after uh, – if you're – the, the psychological is what I'm going to talk about. We, we know what the physical is, okay? They got three more games – they're three games against teams that um, Vanderbilt's having a, a terrific year for Vanderbilt. But Florida's down at third-string quarterback. D.J. Lagway is going to try to go this week. And then Oklahoma's having one of their worst seasons in the last quarter century. So without the playoffs on the line, without a without an opponent that's having a stellar year, and with all due respect no. to Mandy, um, you got to keep this group engaged. And – I got to I got to think that that's even more challenging in the transfer portal age and you know the if you if you're not going to be in the playoffs whatever happens for the bowl game and stuff like that so that to me is is Kelly's charge some valuable reps there's some valuable information to be gleaned here you still got a quarter of the season left but if the goals are off the board it's tough to keep them focused yeah you just got to go down the goal list I mean everybody starts with a national championship SEC championship ten win season I mean that's that's the top three goals. Look, you you can scratch off the first two. You got to turn your first focus to the ten win. It's still something attainable. That's what the push is going to be. These guys want a ten win season. It's you look, you know, the fans don't want to hear it, but ten wins means a lot. I mean, that means you go out there and you dominate the majority of the games you played. Um, and like I said, there's, in the post game, you've got to understand that you can't quit because the older guys they're playing for film. I mean, they want to go out and show the best football that they got. The younger guys they want to go out and show what they can be next year. So there's still different ways to motivate yourself. That'll be Brian Kelly's charge as we move forward. Thanks to everybody uh, for watching us. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and we'll be back next week with another version of the Handicast.